go get YouTube and let's go get Periscope. Let's say what's up to everybody and then uh, let's go ahead and get started with this quick lesson, you guys. I'm so sorry, I'm so late uh, coming in, but I am going to try to make sure that uh, I can actually watch everybody on Facebook today and actually be engaged. I got told off in a very polite way on yesterday that I'd be leaving the people on Facebook hanging. So I get to look at the television and see what's going on um, on the television. So let me mute my phone on Periscope and let's go ahead and get started, you guys. Real quickly, my name is George Howard. I'm the author of Editor Credit. I'm the founder of Financial Freedom University and I have been teaching financial literacy now for over 20 plus years from a biblical perspective. We've written curriculums for the National Urban League of Young Professionals in Nashville, Tennessee, the National Urban League. Um, Young Professionals and also the NAACP in Nashville, Tennessee, Breakthrough Ministries. I have now had Financial Freedom University where we've helped eliminate over $80 million worth of debt. What's going on, Jason? John What's going on, Jason? Man, I haven't seen you in forever, man. So good to see you, man. God bless his grace and peace upon you, man. Have not seen you in forever. Lord Jesus. Y'all, that's one of them childhood friends that's just, you know, you'd be proud of them when you see them doing well in life and that's one of them guys it looks like i'm a little blurry on the television but i see angela i see ernie shanklin another gut young childhood friend tina what's going on tina lisa Veronica, Catherine, brian howard and sharon goodson miss goodson whoop, whoop. what's going on guys we got people from all over then of course on periscope i got uh val miss sudden cheyenne kim well cheyenne left me today but i see you again girl kim randall anika brenda Tamara, uh, Shane, Joanna Key, what's going on, Joanna, Linda, Reagan, Sabrina, woo, woo. Uh, Yolanda, who is also Yanard or ADHD, Latanya, Charlotte, and several other people who I cannot see, but thank you guys for joining in. You guys, we're talking about donkey kids. Yes, I'm talking about your kids. I'm going to tell you up front, I'm talking about your kids. Kids, but before we get into content on tonight, you guys, don't slap me, Veronica. Veronica, uh, before we get into content on tonight, you guys, I want to let you guys know that we do have a class starting six steps to six figures here at Financial Freedom University. Um, <clears throat> you can join us online, it will be a live class. Uh, you will have accountability in this group, guys. We have four levels of accountability because it is a 16 week class. So, in order, uh, Man, you are all about the movement. I'm started. That's what I'm talking about, JJ. That's what I'm talking about, man. Thank you so much. Um, guys, it's a 16-week course, you guys, that we have. It's online. Uh, but let me tell you about the four different levels of accountability. All right? Uh, the first level is uh, you're going to be accountable to um, a partner. It's called accountability partner. We're going to put you into an accountability partner with a group, Right? Uh, then you're also going to be accountable to a whole small group, which you're going to have um, a mentor in. That means you have a mentor, and that mentor will have probably four to five people in a group, uh, and you guys will all be in the same region. We try to keep everybody in the same city, uh, but you guys will be in the same region at least. Um, and then in that group, you will have an accountability partner. That's two levels of accountability. The third level of accountability is that we all meet twice. You guys will meet with your group once a week. Every week you will meet with that group. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, you'll kept talking to your accountability partner throughout the week um, through homework assignments, thing, this thing. Then you will meet as a total class. That means every all of the small groups will meet every other week on a Saturday. Um, you guys will meet every other week. We'll come together as a conglomerate family to talk about the things we're going through. What's going on, Paris? Good to see you. Tiffany, good to see you. And then finally, guys, we have not only the Wealth Room as a accountability group, but that's a total different accountability group um, that we call Wealth Warriors. And that's only for people who are in six steps to six figures because you will go through some heartaches and headaches. And this course is meant to change your life. Your life and your lifestyle is what it's meant to do. And so uh, as we take on this endeavor, I want you guys to understand that uh, it's not a small feat. It's not a small uh, tasks that you'll be taking on. This is something that's going to change your life for the rest of your life. You want to make sure that you get involved with this. Guys, um, it is $34.97 a week. <clears throat> MyFFU.com forward slash six steps is where you want to go to go register. And we're going to be talking about one of the things we're going to be talking about in this class. What's going on, Javon? Good to see you, Javion. Carlos Lowe's, good to see you, guys. The best barber, not on this side of the region, the best barber in the country. 
Uh, Paris, good to see you, man. It's Carlos Turner. That's my barber, you guys. I tell you what, uh, I got an excellent barber here in Gary, Indiana. I miss Cookie do the thing, but I tell you what, man, nobody do me like Carlos Turner, man. I love you, dude. Good to see you. Guys, we're talking about donkey kids, right? And I, call, I picked the donkey kids, guys, because many of us literally got kids that act just like a donkey. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it. I want you guys to get it. And I'm talking about your kids. I'm talking about your kids. Yo, as in you, as in you. Your kids uh, act like a donkey. Now, stay with me because I'm not insulting your babies. I'm not insulting your, you know, the ones that you didn't birth. But if you stay with me, I promise you, you'll get something out of this lesson. Uh, when I was growing up, <clears throat> guys, um, when I was growing up, I literally had fear of my parents. I literally had fear of my parents. I There were certain things that I knew I could do, and there were certain things I knew that I couldn't do, and I could try them if I wanted to, and nine times out of ten, if I tried them, I was going to get the stew knocked out of me. And this is what would actually happen, you guys. Um... I didn't have options growing up. My mama told me I had two options, literally, um, to uh, to live or to obey. Like, it's either you're gonna live or you're gonna. That's the only two choices. You're gonna live or you're gonna obey. If you don't obey, you're gonna die. That was pretty much the only options I had. I didn't have choices and options. I couldn't talk back. So check this out. So growing up, there was no such thing as telling your parents what you're gonna do. Like, there were certain things. Shanetta Flowers, good to see you. Um, there were certain things. Miss Tolliver, good to see you. Diane, good to see you. There were certain things, you guys, that we had to do. So, for example, I knew on Sundays I was going to church. I knew on Wednesdays I was going to church. This was not an option. What's going on, Melanie? Good to see you. These were not options. This was had to be. If you spent the night at my house on Saturday, you were going to church on Sunday. This is not an option. You don't get to go home on Sunday morning. No, you're going to church, right? Um, good grades were not an option. My mama told me, um, F stands for fool, B stands for dumb, D stands for dummy, C is average, and ain't nobody in this house average, and B might get you by, but A will help you excel. Like, that was, like, that. these were literally truths that we had to have in my house. Like, this was, you couldn't bring C's home. That means you were average, and nobody was average in our house. You was above average. Um, if my mama told me to, to do something, I was on the phone, I couldn't tell her to hold on. What I had to do was tell the other person I was talking to, hold on. And I had to put the phone down because we didn't have cell phones back then. We were blessed to get a cordless phone, right? Hold on. You put the phone down. You go do what your mama told you to do. And you came back and you finish your conversation. Yeah. Yeah. If I was playing, you know, back in the day, it was Nintendo. If I was playing Nintendo and my mama told me to do something like, Georgie, come here. And you push the pause button, you go see, and she be like, go get me some water. And you be like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, I could be outside, literally, playing football, and I could come in, and she's like, Georgia, like, you, she yelling outside. We come in, like, you sweating. Yes, ma'am, what's going on? Uh, change the channel. What? Are you serious? Change the channel? Man, you couldn't, you bet not, you bet not frown. You better not mumble. You better not talk under your breath. You better not slam no doors. You better not stump no feet. You better change the channel and do it with a smile and walk up and say, Mama, is there anything else you need? That, man, listen. There were certain things about parenting that you just had to do. It's, I mean, there's, there's certain about kids that you you have no choices in the matter. Is that K down there? What's up, K? I'm Periscope. There were certain things that you just had to do when you were growing up. For example, um, if I was going somewhere, I couldn't do this. Mom, I'm going such and such. I'll be back at this time. No, you better. What's going on, Kiki? You better put that in the form of a question. Good to see you, Beverly. You better put it in the form of a question. So it starts like this. Mom, is it okay if I? Mom, can I go to? Ain't no mama, I'm going to do such and such or mama, I'm not going to do. There was no such thing as that. I don't know where we got this stuff from, but guys, we ain't got away. These kids today growing up and got away with murder because today growing up, it is exactly opposite. Kids are now telling their parents what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, 
how they going to do it, what they ain't going to do. You got kids today, you got parents today who literally saying, I can't, I, I can't control them. Huh? Do you feed them? Do they live in the house with you? Do, 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 do you clothe them? Do they sleep under your roof? And you can't control them. I don't understand that concept. I, I don't. I don't understand. You got kids who literally say, or parents saying, I can't get my kids. Uh, you survived, turned out great. You better believe it. I can't get my kids to uh, come to church. That's a choice. You get you get your kids you get your kids choices. I didn't get choices growing up. What? I, I literally and I ain't talking about y'all. Y'all know we famous for saying this, but let's be real. We can say that my generation, black like, white kids, is grown. They grow up different. But today, y'all, black kids is acting just as much of a donkey as these white kids out here. Let's just be real for a minute. Black kids growing up acting just as much of a donkey. As white kids, they they listen. They entitled. They feel like they entitled to different things. Listen to me. I'm going somewhere with this donkey thing. Stay right here and catch this lesson. They feel entitled to do what they want to do. They have no respect for authority. They gonna talk back. They y'all better hear me. Uh, watch. They gonna tell you what they gonna do, when they gonna do it, when they gonna be home. They ain't. I ain't going to church. What you mean? You ain't going. You what? This is the society and the culture that we're raising in these kids. I call them donkey kids. I'm talking about kids that just, you go to the stove and they just fall out in the middle of the stove. Ah! You'll be like, if you don't, it ain't even my kid. If you don't get your tail up, you, you want to snatch him for the, just come here. You want to snatch <laughs> You want to snatch him for him. You won't get yourself about this poor boy embarrassing your mama out here. <coughs> What's up, Dolby? <clears throat> Y'all know I'm getting a little sick. I'm getting over a cold. So, all right. But real talk. This is real truth. This is real truth. I call them donkey kids. I call them donkey kids because donkey kids cannot be controlled. They can't be. They tell their parents what to do when their parents should be telling them what to do. Well, the truth is, you guys, while we use an analogy for children, the truth is, every single person that under, under the sound of my voice, at some point in their life, have donkey kids. And I'm not talking about the kids that are biological. I'm talking about money. Your money, literally, is supposed to obey you. But the truth is, many of the times, your money controls you, and you don't control your money. Just like my mama told me what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and when I was going, where to do it when I was younger, that's how you're supposed to control your money. Your money's supposed to do exactly what you tell it to do, when you tell it to do it, how long you tell it to do it, and it better obey you right now. But the truth is, guys, your money is out of control. You, Your money is off the chain. Not, not off, off. <laughs> Y'all hear me say that? Like off the, it's off, it's out of control. Let me give you some examples. Your money tell you how much you can spend when you go to the grocery store. You know how I know? Because you checking the application before you go, before you get there, you checking your app, trying to see uh, how much money you got in the bank. Your money tells you if you can call off work. You sick and you're like, I can't even call off work. I ain't got no more sick time. Your money tells you if you can go on vacation. Your money tells you pretty much if you can go to the family funeral. Your money, your, your money tells you how you travel. Can I fly? Do I got to catch a train? Do I catch a bus? Do I got to catch a car? What? Well, catch a car. Do I go in a car? Your money has been dictating and controlling your life. But the truth is, and that's normal to you now. But the truth is, you are supposed to tell your money what to do. Well, good to see you, Court. Your money's supposed to tell you what to, you're supposed to tell your money what to do. I need you to go. And I need you to watch this. I need to reproduce yourself. I, I, watch this. I'm not going to ask my money for permission to go. I'm going to tell my money when I'm going to go, how long I'm going to stay, how much I'm going to spend, and how much I'm going to have when I get home. The truth is, though, many of us got donkey kids. And it's called our money. Your money is acting like a straight donkey. It tells you what your money bosses you around. At some point in your life, you got to gather control of your money and begin to tell it what to do. 
Your money is supposed to make more money. Your your money should have kids. And those kids should have kids. And your kids, them kids should have kids. And you should be able to look in your checking account and see your great, 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 great grandkids. Because your money then multiplied four and five and six different generations over and over and over and over and over again. But your money never multiplies because it's too busy telling you what to do. And you don't have enough left over at the end of the month. And you're living check to check. At some point, you got to put the donkey up. And say, we're going to get a control of this money. Good, good evening, Natasha. We're going to get control of our finances. How do I do that? How do I begin to get control of my finances? I'm going to tell you how. You get control of your finances. It ain't through a budget. I'm tell you the first way how you don't do it. It's not through a budget. I'm so tired. Now, I believe in budgeting. But budgeting doesn't work if you don't work. Budgeting is like reading a diet. You can read 15 diets. If you don't apply it to your life, it's no good. I don't care how many numbers you put on paper. And I don't care how many, I don't care what you do and what you write down. If you don't apply it to your life, it's not going to work. Russell, Russell, my roommate from Purdue. Well, he wasn't my roommate. That was my boy. What's up, Russ, man? Good to see you, man. Uh, matter of fact, I'm still in GI, man. You need to give me a call. Please call me. You still got the same number from way back in the day. Um, man, inbox me your number, Russ. Um, Anyway, the rest of this threw me all the way off. You see people from a long time, right? But guys, ladies, at some point, the way you got gain control of your money, it ain't through budgeting. It's by gaining control of yourself. Hear me. You got to you gotta gain control of you before you can ever gain control of your money. Most people believe right now, I need to make more money, I need to make more money, I need to make more money. And you probably do need to make more money. But the truth is, that's not your, main, that's not your major problem. Your major problem is, right now, you don't even know where your money is. Because you got donkey kids. Where your money at? If I ask you right now, watch this, where your money at? What, from the last time you got paid to right now, where your money at? You probably couldn't tell me. Just like them bad kids ran off and, they don't, your, and the parents don't know where their kids at. You don't know where your kids are. It's called your money. Because you letting your kids run all over the city, all over the world, all over. Your money is all over Facebook, all over Amazon, all over eBay. Your money is all over. Listen to me. I'm, I'm telling y'all something. Your, your money is all over. Well, I tell you what, it ain't, it ain't in church. <laughs> I hope it is, but it probably ain't. Uh, your money's everywhere. And you only... At the gas station, the grocery store, in the vending machine, and you go back and you look and be like, man, I just got paid and I'm broke. Why and how? This is how you know your money acting a donkey. This is how you know your kids, which is your money acting a donkey. When you say, I can't break a hundred or it's gone, or I can't break a fifty or it's gonna be gone, that's how you know your money acting a dang on donkey. Your money acting a donkey if you got donkey money say me i want y'all to put it on out there because we're gonna get control of donkey money today donkey money donkey kids i mean your money acts a donkey say me is it <laughs> money all over the place yeah like and i know there's a probably like a good two or three minute delay i think it's like a like about a minute and a half delay so we're gonna see but yeah that's that's tiffany said me already so i got one person being honest so facebook ain't that far behind uh, mine over my part. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Riri. But at some point, guys, how you doing? So how do I gain control of me? First thing, and I, I want y'all to write this down, highlight it in yellow, write it on the tablet of your heart. The first thing you got to do in order to gain control of your donkey kids and say, I'm going to use some self-discipline in my life. And I didn't mean to cuss and use the D word, discipline. Um, But the truth is, the way you gain control of it is that you got to want, watch this, listen to me, you got to want more money more than you want more stuff. Until you, listen to me, until you want something more than where you already are, it will never change. So let's just do it in levels. Let's say I want stuff and it's a level seven. Levels, like for me, gadgets. I'm a gadget guy. That is, that's my thing. If it got buttons and a screen, Bruh, I'm all over it. Oh, it got buttons in the screen and it connect to the internet. My God. 
Lord, it don't get no, yeah, I'm I'm that dude, right? So let's just say that's for me, the new gadget is a level seven. I got to want money or riches or wealth more than I want that stuff. So it gives me the discipline to want money more than I want the stuff. So me saving or investing has to be a level eight or above. As long as it's a level six or under, that seven is going to win every single time. So you got to want, listen to me, you got to want more wealth and savings. So how do you do that? Because everybody say, I want more money, right? Everybody said, you got to find something that's bigger than you as to why you want it. Listen to me. If you just want money to get rich, you're never going to get there because it's not big enough. You got to want money to say, you know what? I, I, I got to be able to leave something to my kids' kids. I got to be able to leave something to my kids' kids. I want I want to I want to be able to leave them uh, more than my mama left me. Uh, I understand that when my father died, we, we we were in debt and we didn't have a way to pay for the funeral, and, and he didn't leave us nothing. I I, I understand that you know. I, uh, that I got to pay for college that's coming up and I don't want my kids to be able to have a, a better education than what I was able, my parents were able to give me. I don't want them to have that struggle. As long as you are literally trying to fight you with you, you're going to never win. I know that didn't make sense. So let me, let me try to break it down. Flesh cannot contain flesh. Your flesh can't contain flesh. You have to be able to disseminate what's emotion and what's logical. Many times when we purchase, it's based on emotion. And emotion is not always desire. It's not always happiness. Sometimes we buy out of fear. Sometimes we buy... And this is where six steps get really kind of interesting. Because, guys, it's a 16-week course, but we spend three weeks just on you. Because many times we try to change our money, but we never changed our mind. Guys, the way that you actually get rich is by changing your mind first. And if you change your mind, I promise you, you'll change your money. And I believe that all day long. I've been teaching this since I was in two, since 2004. If you change your mind, you'll change your money. I know that now that's kind of popular, but this is 2004. This is my phrase. You change your mind, you change your money. It change from changing your pocket to dollar bills in your wallet. Like uh, we've been, I've been teaching this for a long time. But I'm telling you that you can get more money. And if you don't change your mindset, you're still going to be broke. That's how people to get to hit the lottery literally end up broken five years or less. That's how NFL players or NBA players literally went on strike in the NBA and they couldn't play child support. Why? Because they were living check to check. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you do with the money that you have. I literally counsel people right now that make 200, 250, 300 thousand dollars a year, three, 275, almost 300 thousand dollars a year. Right now, I counsel them. Right now. And they make and they're just as broke as the person who makes thirty thousand dollars a year. This is not made up, it's not fabricated, it's not fabricated. This is exactly the truth. There are a lot of us who spend out of emotion because you never dealt with your past. A lot of your, your a lot of your kids are acting like donkeys, talking about your money. Because you never dealt with issues like when I was growing up, I couldn't afford nice clothes, so now I'm gonna make sure that I wear the nicest clothes. And so now you overdo something that has nothing to do with money, has to do with that pain, that void that, that you never dealt with as a kid. And now it haunts you today as your present. That, that they made fun of you and you never want to be made fun of again, so you overdo it. And so now that I can, or when I was growing up, my parents didn't do for me, so I always want to overdo for my kids. Or watch this, single woman, single woman, because their father's not here, I want to compensate with money, but you never watch this, but now they're entitled, now you're broke, and now both of you in bad shape. At some point, you got to want to do better with your money. Get control of these donkey kids. This is real talk. This is real lessons. This is real life. Today, black America is worth $1.2 trillion, according to Forbes magazine. We do $1.2 trillion a year. When I first started doing this, guys, it was $600 billion. 
I remember teaching this in 2006 on the radio. It was like 600 billion was an awesome number. We guys were worth 600 billion dollars. Guys, we're double that today. We're 1.2 trillion dollars, and we're still in the same spot. Our net worth is still ugly. We're still in poverty. We still control the poverty level. We're still at the highest of poverty as a race or a culture. Hispanics are doing better than us than financially. Hispanics are doing better than us educationally. Hispanics are doing better than us even in healthcare. We're still at the bottom level. That ain't the white man's fault. That's your fault. That's my fault. That's our fault as a community. And we got to do something about it. How? We got to get self-discipline in our life and begin to change it. How do you do that? You got to change you. You got to change you. We look good, guys, but we're broke. Our kids, our donkey kids are all over the place. They're all over the place. It's in your hair. It's on your wrist. It's on your fingers. It's around your neck. It's on your shoulders. It's on your on your hips. It's the belt, the shoes. Yeah, we look good. You fly. Can't pay my bills because all my money spent. But that's all right because I'm still fly. Got everything in my mama name. Really? Guys, we hood rich. What is hood rich? And we laugh about it like it's funny. But it ain't funny when it gets time to retire. And now you're the old person at Walmart saying, welcome to Walmart. It ain't funny then. So ask yourself this question right now. I want to ask you this. And I'm serious. If you were to retire at the same rate of savings you're doing right now, could you do it? And we're going to actually talk about that more on tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about what's your number. I want your, you know, I want, you know. Tomorrow's going to be called what's your number, right? And I don't want your phone number. I want that number that's going to take for you to retire. Because at some point, guys, this stuff is real. Social Security is not going to be there. Medicare, pfft, Obamacare, huh, they trying to get rid of that. And he ain't been out of office very long, like a little bit over a year. So what's going to happen? Guys, most pensions are gone. They replaced them with 401ks. What's going to happen? Car park because you can't get it fixed. At some point, we got to do something different. At some point, you got to think differently. So I use the analogy of donkey kids because I knew you could relate to it because most of us grew up in my generation or older and we knew we had parents that didn't play. But you letting your kids run wild. And your kids is called money. It's running wild. You got to gain control of it. You got to bring it back under submission of the household. You shouldn't have to check your application to find out where your kids went. You checking your Chase account, your Bank of America account, or, or your Fifth Third account or whatever it is to find out where your money went. You should not have to check... You know, if you got to look at an app to find out the balance and how much money you still got, or when you look at it and it's less than what you thought, you got to scroll up to find out, oh, that clear, oh, I forgot that clear, oh, I forgot I spent that there. Are you serious? And then you wonder why God won't give you no more. Because you haven't been faithful to the few that he's given you. You do know the Bible says if you've been faithful with the few, then I can trust you with much. But you can't even be, you can't even figure out where you went with that. Matter of fact, I think we might use it as a Bible study tomorrow. Luke chapter 16. It's talking about money in that scripture. So I asked a question earlier, and I think I only had like two people, Jason and Tiffany on Periscope, I mean on Facebook, and then I had some people, cut like one or two people on, on, face, on Periscope. But guys, can you just take the minute to be honest with yourself and say, that's me. It's, it's me. I got donkey kids. I, I got to do something about it. I, I don't know where my money's going. My money's all over the place. I, I know I make uh, at least enough money that I don't have to live in a struggle bus. But yet and still every single month, I find myself on this struggle bus. You know, I'm either in the land of not enough or I'm in the land of just enough. What's the difference? The land of not enough is is, is why you were in Egypt. Listen to me. The people in Egypt, the people in Egypt were slaves. They, they were slaves. 
they 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 didn't have enough to make ends meet. Pharaoh was their taskmaster. And whatever they got is what they got from Pharaoh. Some people in here today that you are still in Egypt. You're still under the taskmaster. You're still under the corporate plantation. You can't get enough. And watch this. You're living literally where it's not enough. It's called the land of not enough. It's called Egypt. It's called Egypt. It's the land of not enough. It's under Pharaoh. That means you're literally have to borrow every month. You're going to pay their loan stores. You're living off credit cards. That's the land of not enough. But then we have another land. It's called the land of just enough. When they left Egypt, Moses took them. They took them over to the wilderness on the way to Canaan. You're trying to get to the land of more than enough. That's Canaan. But you stopped in Egypt. On, I'm sorry. You stopped in the wilderness on the way. And it's called the land of just enough. That's where they got fed manna. And the Bible says that they could not have enough for tomorrow. They could only eat what they could eat and consume today. If they if they tried to save it, it turned into maggots. It's a land of just enough where you live from hand to mouth. You make good money, but you're still living check to check. You can't figure out, yeah, I went to school and I got this college education, but it's not working for me because I'm still struggling. You sit back and you watch everybody else doing it in life and you're looking at everybody else's um, fake book page. I mean, Facebook page. You're looking at everybody, you know, pimpogram. I mean, Instagram. Because everybody, all the pictures you see on fake book and pimpogram is literally stuff that they are literally want to show you. You know, because you do it too. But girl, hold on, hold on. Stay right there. Hold on. Let me let me get this pose right here. I'm going to put this on Periscope. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put this on Instagram. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going on vacation. Or oh, let me take a picture of this meal. Huh? Huh? So you you finally went, you finally didn't made it to Roof Chris. And now you got to take a picture and let everybody know I finally made it to Roof Chris. Are you that? Is your, your mindset so messed up that you got to let people know you at Roof Chris? It's a meal, baby. It's only food. But we do it. We got to take a picture outside, say Roof Chris. We got to go inside, take a picture of the waiter, take a picture of the food. Why? And then we then other people see it, but oh, they didn't made it. No, they didn't. They struggling. It's, it's the image that you want to portray. But images don't play images don't play dividends. Real money does. Is it you? Are, are you that person? Just looking at other people, their Facebook page, their Instagram page, saying, man, how are they doing it? How are they going on vacation? How are they able to live the life that they're living? And while you're looking at them, the truth is I'm probably counseling them they're probably broke. 78% of America is living check to check. So I want to let you know, first of all, you're not alone. You're not in this by yourself. If I lined up five people right now, four of you are broke. Four of you are living check to check. You're not by yourself. You can get out of the land of not enough. You can get out of the land of just enough. And you can go into that place of the land of more than enough. If you're getting colored bills in the mail, you need to take this class. Color bills, you know, the rainbow, the rainbow coalition. You know, you got the pink bill, that's the cutoff note. You got the yellow bill, you got the green bill, you got the red bill. You know, all the bills are coming in the mail. And then you got the ones from the bank that you already know you gotta rip the edges off because you already know it's insufficient funds. You know, those, those, those letters too. Yeah, got you ain't got to live that way. There's an answer, that's a solution for you. And I promise you guys, it's worked over and over and over again. I've been doing this for the last 20 plus years. This is the anointing. It's the calling of my life. My calling and my I'm financial Moses. My land, my 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 issue, my mission, my anointing is to come into Egypt and rescue God's people because he really wants to bring them to Canaan. He God doesn't want Egypt for you. He don't want the life that you're living for you. He don't want you living check to check. And it's not about seed time and harvest. This is practical principles and applications that's going to bring you out of debt, get your credit together, literally, you know, help get your mindset together, increase your cash flow. All of these things we're going to help you do in this class and more. Minimize your taxes and how to teach you how to invest and when to invest. In fact, we can talk about the six steps. You'll probably do that like Thursday or Friday. What are the six steps to six figures? Let me tell you what the six steps to six figures are. Number one is called motivation implementation. I got to change your mindset. So we spent three weeks in the class on just mindset changing, helping you 
deal with you, helping you face you, helping you deal with the issues in your life that why you spend the way you spend and why you do what you do, helping you see and look at money differently so you do money differently so you get different results with money. That's all I want to do. That's my whole mission, to look at money differently, do different, do different with money and have different results with money. We do that the first three weeks. Then after we get your mindset together, now I got to get your cash flow together because most of you think you need more income. Let me tell you this, baby. You don't need more income. You need more cash flow. Now, I can spend a whole three, 10 hours on just cash flow over income. Literally. You don't need more income. You need more, I mean, you need more cash flow. As income increases, so does liabilities and expenses. Because if you never change your mind, trust me, you'll never get more cash flow. Because watch this. If I get the promotion, I get the raise, guess what I want? I want a bigger, I want a better house. I want a bigger car. I, I, I want a more luxury car. I want a faster car. I want to wear a little bit nicer clothes. And I look up and I'm just as broke when I made, you know, $20,000. Now I'm making $60,000 and I'm still living check to check. If that's you, raise your hand. You live check to check in college and you're living check to check. You didn't graduate it. You're married. You got kids and you're still living check to check. How in the world am I still living check to check? And I've gone through all. I, 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 I make more money now than I ever made in my life. And I'm still check to check. How? Because it's not income you need is cash flow, baby. You don't need more income. You need more cash flow. Number step number so it's got motivation implementation number one, cash flow generation number two. Step number three is debt elimination. Guys, you're on the wrong side of compound interest. The truth is you actually are paying into a retirement plan. It's just not yours. The retirement plan that you're paying into is Visa, is MasterCard, it's Discover, it's American Express, it's Carno, it's Student Loan. All of these companies I just named are privately owned companies. And you pay them interest every month. You are their retirement plan. You're on the wrong side of compound interest. Instead of you paying them, somebody should be paying you. I'm going to teach you and show you how to get out of debt systematically. Everybody, every single buy, every single person that we've sat down with has been debt free in seven years or less. You challenge me. You challenge me. Seven years or less. That's including your mortgage. Debt free. I'm talking about $200,000 in student loan bills. Debt free in seven years or less. Challenge me. This is my calling. This is my anointing. Debt elimination number three. Number four is credit restoration. Some of y'all credit is toe up from the flow up. Literally. Toe. Toe up from the flow up. Y'all, some of y'all credit crooks. Some of y'all say, George, I got decent credit, but I wish it was better. Guys, we teach you. I'm the author of Editor Credit. I wrote the book in 2002. I ain't new to this. They ain't 2012. 2002. I wrote a 198 page workbook like this big in 2002. I'm not new to this. I've been doing this for over 20 plus years. Guys, that's not that alone. You'll pay somebody $400 to fix your credit, but you can take a class. Not only can you learn how to fix your own credit, but now you can actually be in the past that down to your kids, to your grandkids, to your mama them, to your sister and your cousin them. Credit restoration, step number four. Step number five is tax minimization. Your president, Trump, has now told you today that I don't pay taxes. It makes me, I'm smart. I don't pay taxes. Warren Buffett tells you that he's in a lower tax bracket than his secretary. Bill Gates will tell you all day long that he wishes they would change or do, do tax reform law because he feels like that the tax form reform is, the tax base right now is unfair. And then they just did tax reform. And guess what? They made better cuts for the rich. Why is it that the rich don't pay taxes? Do you know you can play by the same rules? We teach you how to play by those rules. We teach you how to get the tax cuts, the tax write-offs, tax minimization. And then finally, you guys, the last one is wealth accumulation. After I got your mindset together, after I got your cash flow together, after I got your debt together, after I got your credit together, now I got your taxes together, the last thing that I got to get together is your wealth. So now we can begin to accumulate wealth. These are the six steps that we take you through and six steps to six figures. It's a 16-week course. If your kids are acting a donkey, I'm telling you now, you need to gain control. $34 a week. MyFFU.com forward slash six steps. That's where you want to go. Right now, go. MyFFU.com forward slash six steps. We've got a place just for you. If that's you, I'm telling you. You say, George, I ain't got $34 a week. That's more of a reason why you need to be in the class. If you ain't got $34 a week, that's even more of a reason why you need to take this class. You mean to tell me you go to work every single day and you ain't got an extra $35 a week? 
Are you serious? That's 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 Starbucks. That that's 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 coffee. That's that's vending machine money. That's that's two three days of lunch that you can sacrifice a week. Find it and change your life for the rest of your life. Don't do this just for you, but do it for your kids. Do it for your lineage. Do it for your legacy. But you gotta make a change today. You gotta start somewhere. When are you gonna take that change? Click on the link below www.myffu.com forward slash six steps and watch it change your life. Get rid of donkey kids. Donkey kids is not for you. You're gonna change. You're gonna get control of your money and begin to see yourself becoming a wealth builder, not a consumer. Guys, that's my time for today. Thank you so much. I apologize for coming on so late, um, but we were meeting with our investors who just made watch this as a total combined net worth. $2.1 million today with our partners. So I want to give them a round of my hand because guess what? They got their money, their kids making money. And their kids are going to make more money. And those kids are going to make more money because they're putting their money to work. You can do the same thing too. One auction, $2.1 million. One auction. But after you get the money, the question is what do you do with it? Guys, I'm gone. I'll see you guys later. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you later.